For full episodes as they air, listen to Grant's Rants Hollywood Talk on Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, and blogtalkradio.com slash Grant's Rants. Broadcasting from Hollywood, California, it's Grant's Rants Hollywood Talk. Celebrity Big Brother comes to the U.S., and I have the perfect casting recommendation. Cardi B is the new It Girl. Sorry, Nicki Minaj. We prepare for Lady Gaga's Netflix documentary, and when the hell is Fergie's new album coming out? That and more with Stephen Blum right now. Let the ranting begin. I'm sitting across from writer and contributing editor at Vice's Broadly. It's Stephen Blum. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for coming and doing the podcast, Stephen. Thank you. Now, we have a mutual friend who's been on this show, Marissa Goodman. Oh, my God. She's amazing. Yes. So uh, I bumped <laughs> into you more recently than not at her birthday. So I feel like, you know, it's time to have you on the show. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, she's she's a, a real trip. Uh, Marissa is, is like uh, amazing. She I feel like she's on a reality TV show, and the reality TV show is her life. Oh my god, I basically. know. Yeah. There's always so much going on with her, and she's traveling, and she was looking at a place nearby my place, and I was like, please be my neighbor. Like it'd be oh, so entertaining. She would fit in perfectly in West Hollywood. Yes, I hope that it happens, or yeah. somewhere nearby, somewhere close. Yeah. But we got we have some things to talk about uh, and the rants. Um, you know, I have been very busy with different projects, and it's just been an exhausting end of summer, early fall for me. And I'm just trying to keep all the balls in the air, but I have been planning some really great shows for this podcast. So just stick with me and let's get into all of it. Starting with the announcement of there being a celebrity version of Big Brother coming to CBS this winter, not fall, but coming up. And um, this was a a surprise to me. I feel like in a way, maybe they're doing too much with the brand of Big Brother in the United States and it's just kind of being watered down. They had a digital companion last year, who knows. But I watch Celebrity Big Brother in the UK. If there's anyone decent on, I'll watch it. And I've watched it a couple times. So to me, like that box is checked. You know what I mean? Yeah. Those real hardcore fans, if they want to see Celebrity Big Brother, they're already watching it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now, what, do you watch any of these shows? Do you Have you ever watched Big Brother? I watched Big Brother, like, forever ago. Okay. Um, but I was very entertained by, like, Julie Chen's interview with The Hollywood oh. Reporter. Yes. She was like, we're not going to get Oscar winners. What else did she say? She had this controversial quote about the fact that she like Les Moonves was like we're we're gonna have to pay you like a, a shit ton less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's a they're they're calling it. I love when they use these terms a concentrated run, which is shorter. I mean, look, shorter run. There's less episodes because yeah. of celebrities busy scheduling, which you know then. I was okay with it because I was curious at first. I was like, okay, what type of celebrities are we working with? Are we going the ratchet route? We're going to have like eight mob wives walking around. Or are we going to go for like the the real like dancing with the D-listers? And that's when she said, oh, I really like the casting. I dancing with the stars. Oh, this is where I get worried. This is where I start to get anxious because Dancing with the Stars is the most nursing home show on television. And we don't need that to set the bar for something fresh. You know, that's literally like in season like 29. I'm, it's a little less than that. But please, like, let's think a little bit more outside the box. Right. Then I thought of all of this like synergy, this corporate synergy, mm-hmm. how like on NBC, you know, you see a lot of like the housewives, they did Celebrity Apprentice. Or, like, on ABC, they put Jimmy Kimmel on everything they possibly can. Still don't realize he has no talent. But, I mean, <laughs> I, I, you know, they'll do anything to keep those, those same faces, that corporate synergy right. going. Um, so they can so, make a theme park right about it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, well, what are they going to do on CBS? Because it doesn't have as strong of a, uh, a recognized brand. Mm-hmm. You know, they have their sitcoms, which do really well. But they're, they're, they're not going to put Kaylee Cuoco on Big Brother. Right. You know what I right. mean? So who would... Who who are they going to put on? So I, I gave this some thought. And Juliana Margulies. 
Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, put her on there. Yeah, I'm sure she has the time. <laughs> so I, I said, who can we put on? Like, they think back, like, okay, if their mindset is, God, help us all, for, uh, you know, the dancing with the stars status of people. Yeah. I was like, okay, well, we have to have someone from yesteryear. So I thought, oh, who would do anything for money? So Barry Williams, who played Greg Brady, he he's older, and he could do it. He, what is he doing? You know what I mean? Just give him a check, and he could do the show really easily. You know what I mean? He's, yeah, it sounds good. To Good. worry about their schedule, the Brady Bunch was on CBS. It'll get an older crowd. I'm like, right. okay, there you go. Right. And then I'm sure they'll put on Richard Hatch. I mean, he'll do anything for fifty cents. <laughs> and he what is he the, doing these days? Nothing. Nothing. He was the original Survivor, Survivor winner, yeah. so that's how they can bill him as like, oh, is he gonna? <laughs> is he gonna turn it out? Is he gonna win again? Nobody cares. But sure, put him on. I mean, he's he's a creep. So he'll where does he do live? Well. What does he do? What's his life? He's from Rhode Island. I don't know what he does. But I, didn't he like file for all types of like bankruptcy? And I think he like lost all of his money or something like that. So he'll do anything for cash. Yeah. So put him on it. Yeah. And then I said, well, maybe they should put on someone from like the daytime world. Cheryl Underwood on the talk is pretty fun. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, she'd be a large personality for that show. I don't know if they'll cover any of the soaps you know they could put maybe someone that loves big brother from the soaps but i think she would be fun and then there's always the usual you know reality whores out there who will do anything like brandy glanville if they pay her enough she'll do it um i'm sure there'll be a jersey shore uh former oh, uh, of course you know person on mm-hmm, there mm-hmm. i mean w- w- are they all in jail which w- all the men which man isn't in jail whatever one is free <laughs> they can put on the show yeah the big question is what are these people doing with their time and like can they just step away which i think they mostly can yeah i think so <laughs> Some people just live for it, like like Tiffany New York. I love her to death. She could do this. She did Celebrity Big Brother. She would be wonderful. But I don't see CBS going that direction of kind of ratchet TV. Um, but I mean, if they want people to have a to watch the show, have water cooler moments, they'd be smart to put her on and pay her whatever she wants. But let's talk about like what what kind of person would be even attracted to this role because it's a very like warts and all proposition. Like you're basically mm-hmm. going on camera 24 seven, you're going to have all of your flaws exposed. So it's different than the Life kind of feeds. draw the, of like a r- romance show or, right. you know, like bachelor or even survivor where you get to at least, you know, show that you're, you know, fit to right. survive on an Island. So I don't even know like what, like it's sort of like a radical, like, self-analysis yeah in a way and it's not as fresh as it once was when it comes to the idea of of a celebrity doing a reality show yeah i feel like like they said like in the past around season two which was in 2001 they were talking to paris hilton and roseanne barr and that would be something very out of the box (laughs) (laughs) what a combo that would be amazing so it's like you know what now what i mean every celebrity's done every show and so it's like it's not as novel for someone to be like let me put myself out there and try this so i mean i have a feeling maybe they'll have someone like matt eisman he seems Mm -hmm. to be a pretty you know big brother fan himself and a a big big brother fan Mm -hmm. and um competitive and a really nice guy but i mean we need i have the perfect person yeah this came to me instantly okay they need to have dina lohan do it she's not doing right. anything right she'll take the money yeah you know it's just if it's in a bridge or whatever a short run then she can step <laughs> away from long island long enough to do the show like they'll never get Lindsay. you know what i mean no. so like Lindsay's in mykonos like forever forever yeah, yeah on a boat forever <laughs> but dina should do this so yeah. i'm putting this out yeah. to the universe grants rants hollywood talk podcast completely endorses 100 percent the casting of dina lohan of long island new york on to Celebrity Big Brother 2018. Done. What is she doing right Nothing. now? Nothing. Nothing. But she was a former momager. Right. And or probably a right. current, if you ask her. So, like, you know, she can talk about the business. She's a household name, you know, for Absolutely. all the wrong reasons. Absolutely. So that's that's my selection. So I want to know what other people think. Who should they put on this show? Because, I mean, I, I feel like they need some help. Because if we're just, again, if we're looking at who's been on Dancing with the Stars... Um, we're not. <laughs> it's like, uh, who's the who's the like Republican senator who is on it again? It's oh, Rick Perry. Oh, um, yeah. What washed up Republican <laughs> candidates are they gonna have to put on anybody from politics? 
I mean, yeah, we really don't. Yeah, he was it. on Dancing with the Stars. Rick Perry. Oh God. Mm. Well, I think it's a good thing. This caught my attention because I feel it's a good thing that I'm weighing it out too, still at the yeah. same time. Now, a lot of unscripted shows right now are these game shows, and they just had Candy Crush on CBS all summer. It did not. Did you well. Did you watch that show? No, I didn't. What What the hell was that show? I have no desire. Why <laughs> did you watch it? No, I'm just like curious. Like it was name reference in the in the Hollywood Reporter piece. Like. I can't imagine that show being tolerable. Did you watch it like a trailer or anything for it? I just saw promos for it, like you know. So it's like tonight. people in front of a giant screen. Yeah. Okay. And it's all like the icons of, you know, I thought it's like Bejeweled Blitz, but no, whatever it is. Why does that feel same. very post-apocalyptic? <laughs> like it feels like the end of civilization. Oh my god, it sounds like the worst idea ever. It's like sounds worse than Young Sheldon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Th- this. Uh, yeah, no, that the whole idea of putting out things like that, you can tell there are a bunch of older people who are completely out of touch. And like, what are kids talking about? Right. Like, and of course, they're talking about what kids are talking about seven years ago. Right. Like, let's do Angry Birds. Yeah. Oh. Do you know they're trying to publicly trade Angry Birds now? Really? Oh, yes. <laughs> like Rovio stock or like actual Angry Birds? Ang- I, th- I think it's like actual stock so I, I i i don't know anyway um now a lot of these shows that go celebrity don't go back you know we've had celebrity yeah. wife sla- swap celebrity apprentice right celebrity mole which was amazing right um, oh that was so good with anderson cooper I oh love, my god yeah who is he wasn't he teamed up with someone I forgot who he's i up think with. he hosted it oh, he hosted it yeah. right 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 i i loved that show that was wonderful yeah so i'm just worried about that but they did say this is separate from big brother next season in the summer will be big brother 19 so you know wow. big brother 20 excuse me so wow. we're gonna continue with that so it's not like going away forever um, but I don't know. Again, I worry about like watering down brands, especially re- in reality TV, since these shows, once they leave, they don't come back. So yeah, that's the only that's thing. interesting. Mm-hmm. Did you read that like expose on Julie Chen being like a nightmare boss on no. the set of Big Brother? Yeah, I can't she, imagine that because she was like, uh, yeah, Les Moonves can get you fired. Like she was using the power of her relationship with Les Moonves. To, like, oh wow, that goes against everything I've heard about her. So yeah, I'm interested in that. Well, it's just a rumor. It's from like two years ago. Oh, I just found okay. out when I was yeah. researching around. Oh, <laughs> I love the dirt, and I, I would have. I mean, she's always talking about him, even on the talk. She's uh, talking about him quite a bit. Mm-hmm. So I'm not totally surprised that she would throw his name around. But I don't know. It sounds odd. It sounds like I don't know if I fully buy into it. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it might be a hit job. Yeah. So then there's this um, article that you sent me, um, how Vice is casting for uh, a real world style DC set reality show. Yeah. And it's like, they're all going to be, I guess, living together. They're looking for people 18 to 45, all different political backgrounds. And um, I'm, I'm kind of interested in this. Yeah. The question, I guess, is like, how do you make sure it's not like trolls on Twitter arguing about politics? Like, how, how mm. will they actually be able to reach some common ground but yeah i'm very interested i have literally no like insider information to share Mm -hmm. and maybe i shouldn't even be talking about it but it's interesting yeah i mean i think you're all right they're just at the beginning casting stages and if they even shoot a pilot it wouldn't be until the spring so it's it's really early and things like this can get killed and shot down so fast i mean it's basically yeah in my opinion like a development idea that they're testing out but i mean yeah they should have done this a year ago right i mean right. this is fine but you know where was this a year ago that's when people would be really interested especially as as everything unfolded at the beginning of 2017 mm-hmm. um but yeah no i mean i i want to see this show i'm interested this is almost something that i would almost consider going for because i do i have my own political views and i'm very um uh very passionate about them yeah. but i mean i don't know if i want to be living in dc to talk about them for like six months either <laughs> so i think i'm okay on that on to my rant of the day grant rant, rant of the, the day. day my rant has to go to Nicki minaj and not in a good way i am so tired of her being so overexposed i just saw an article on facebook the other day and it said that she's now going to be collaborating it's confirmed with zane on music and being featured and i'm like oh she, i mean th- this girl will do music with barney the dinosaur i mean she'll do anything to be featured <laughs> on an album and after a while i think it's just a bad look to say 
say yes to everything. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Put me out. Oh, I'll do this. I mean, you know, after a while, it's just like, you know, where are your standards? You know, I, mean? I understand, like, even my friend Tally was like, these people, they want to make money. Like, you know, they make, she makes money and I get it. Yeah. But as an artist, though, just to jump on everything. <sighs> right. <laughs> And I mean, she couldn't even save Swish Swish, but I, no. I've, I've heard that she's just a really mean person. I think she's a total opportunist. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think that she's someone who pushes her way, elbows people in the face to get on these tracks to make money. That's why she's the only one in the game for so long until recently with Cardi B, who I really enjoy. What do yeah. you make of Cardi B? I don't know so so much about her, actually. She's brand new yeah. for to a lot of people. I mean, yeah. Some people have watched on Love and Hip Hop Days, they know. But like as far as mainstream goes, like she's got the number two song right now. Hopefully soon she'll be number one. And she's a real East Coast New York girl, very upfront. Like, you know, you see her coming, like I like that. I really yeah. respect her, and I like her music quite a bit. And to me, she's the real one. I'm really like just pulling for her to get to the number one track. She has to beat Taylor Swift, so it's almost like not a fair fight. They're two completely opposite artists. Um, yeah. But I really like this this one. Wait, I have dirt on Nicki Minaj. Oh, what do you want to say? Uh, say so it. I have I met this guy who worked at MTV and said that he was working with her and she was the worst person he'd ever worked with and that she had in her writer uh, the uh, request that you can't make eye contact with her, which I guess some stars do have, but she was like militant about enforcing it and somebody like made eye contact with her on accident. She yelled at them. Yeah. Like I didn't care for her, but I hate that crap. Yeah. That is, I've heard so many of these people who can't, you can't have eye contact with. I wonder if it's all true. Right? Because I know that people made that same allegation against Ellen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But who are these people? In the grand scheme of the universe, who are these people? Absolutely nothing. You know what I mean? So I don't view anybody that way, that favorably, believe me. <laughs> I liked Cardi B the minute I found out that she was tight with Little Kim. Because mm-hmm. the, I have so much... Kim is the queen of, of rap. And so I, I, Nicki Minaj always was completely disrespectful and never gave Kim her due. And never even said that she had inspired her when she was asked about other female rappers. I mean, you can't ignore Little Kim. Mm-hmm. So Cardi B had my respect from day one once I learned that they were close or that they at least had a mutual admiration and respect for each other. So I mean, I I am very unassuming, but I love rap music specifically, like. <laughs> female rap music mm-hmm. and all I've been given is straight up garbage by Nicki Minaj so it's been I've been like you know starving over here for good music so I'm happy to see that that Cardi B is on the scene so I'll have to see more from her coming up did you read there was this amazing uh article about uh as uh, not as the banks Iggy Iggy Azalea. Oh, yeah. Uh, I and almost how forgot she, about her. What? I almost forgot I about think, her. I think most people did. But, and it was just sort of about how she came to America to be a rapper, but she had, like, zero cred and zero talent, and how she alienated, like, basically everybody who she came in contact with. But it's, like, a very exhaustively, like, written profile of oh. her. They didn't actually yeah. interview her, but they interviewed, like, every single person person that she worked with basically in LA and uh, just about how they kept trying to brand her and they kept trying to like coach her to respond to these allegations that she was like appropriating, you know, black culture constantly with like a little bit more style and substance and grace, but she like could not take being managed. And she had basically, you know, no, understanding of of uh of where the other side was coming from when Mm. it came to allegations against her so you're saying that she wasn't like uh being open enough to discussing that she was trying to be quote-unquote black is that what it is right it's like i mean you know there's this idea you know people borrow from different cultures all the time but you have to sort of be a little bit cognizant of of what you're doing yeah and uh acknowledge it at least partially, and she never acknowledged it. And mm. whereas, yeah, you know, Macklemore, you know, you can like say a lot of shit about him, but like he did go out of his way to try to, you know, acknowledge that he's stolen a lot. Right. 
<laughs> yeah, Nicki Minaj. I mean, um, uh, Iggy Azalea. I don't know what to say about her. Yeah. I mean, I, she fizzled out real fast, and that's what yeah. I don't want to happen for this girl. And I'm wondering if Nicki's nervous that this girl is now the new girl on the street that people are talking about. She had her performance at the VMAs. You know, she's real upcoming. I wouldn't be surprised if she was like friggin' hosting the show next year. Yeah. So mm, we'll keep an eye on it. But I'm happy for this girl. I'm happy for somebody new for once. It's a different name to be featured on these tracks. I mean, it's the same people doing the same thing. Absolutely. So somebody new to add in at least. This has been my rant of the day. That's my opinion! So let's talk about Lady Gaga in this Netflix documentary. At the time of recording this show, it has not come out yet, but it will be out September 22nd. There's a lot coming out now the next two weeks. There's a lot of content coming. So I'm I, this show. So it's called Lady Gaga colon five foot two. Yes, and it follows her um, and the launch of Joanne and profiles the Super Bowl halftime show. Yes, and um, it looks kind of interesting. At first, I was like, mm, I don't know if I'm going to watch it, but the more I read about it, I think I'll look at it. Yeah, I think it looks great. I mean, I think one thing that makes it seem like a standout, uh, you know, different from like Beyonce's Vandy Project is that she actually gave the director like full control to do you know to do an honest portrait of her she didn't look at the edited version she no. didn't she, she wasn't involved in post-production whatsoever and the first time she saw it was at the tiff premiere apparently and she loved it and you know this guy chris morcabell who did it he he directed a, a documentary called me at the zoo which was about chris crocker mm-hmm. the you know leave Brittany alone guy Mm -hmm. and but that was also like a very nuanced interesting you know he's very he's very artistic but you know I think he I think he probably captured something special and Mm -hmm. I'm interested I mean she's such a workhorse she's such she's done so much and I think just lifting the veil back a little bit is going to be fascinating to to look at Yeah. yeah I love that she had nothing to do with it it wasn't one of these like painted projects to yeah. make her look a certain way or to cut that out. Like, I mean, you see, like, in the promo where she's actually like, can you please turn those off for a minute? Like, I love that. Yeah. Like, you know, she's actually having a moment and they're they're showing that she's in that moment. Yeah. You know, but still being respectful. Um, yeah, I, I really like her as a person. Her music, I've fallen off with her music years ago <laughs> and I hate to say that. Oh, I, yeah. I, I mean, consider myself, pop, yeah. Ugh. I mean, I'm a fan of Lady Gaga. I'm yeah. a fan of Stephanie both. Yeah. But when it comes to the music i mean it's not playing i'm just not playing it you know what i mean i'm playing the original stuff joanne also not so good i was very very into uh her earlier stuff totally um and i think that's the general consensus that i think someone needs to let her know that you know let's go back to you know and it's up to her she goes with what she wants to do i get it but I mean, this guitar strumming music is it's just not what people it's not how people were introduced to her and yeah. I, I don't listen to that I don't listen to that music at all yeah so I'm not gonna listen to it because just because she's singing it you know what I mean totally yeah. totally I mean but I also you know her public persona to me it's kind of irritating sometimes like I I think that she tries very hard sometimes and she's not authentic and that she's like, you know, trying to be this like huge gay supporter. And I appreciate it a lot. But I also feel like it, it was a strategic move, obviously, mm-hmm. at times. And uh, I, I'm i interested in the in the documentary also, because I think it seems a little bit like cinema verite. It seems like there is some some truth to the portrayal. And maybe I'll actually like her more because I. I appreciate, I respect her, and I like what she's created. Sometimes I find her to be grating. So, like, if this makes me understand who she is better, then that will be an interesting mm-hmm. an interesting movie-going experience, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, she opens up about having a medical battle with fibromyalgia, the chronic pain illness. Right. Um, I, I, I don't know why it was saved to be revealed for this documentary. It seems a little gimmicky. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's just, it does show that literally everyone's going through something. Mm-hmm. And it's unfortunate that, like you said, she's such a workhorse and she doesn't say no to much. And she's yeah. jumping off the top of the building and all this stuff, but she really is dealing with real problems. So I like that she's always been pretty three dimensional, but I do miss the days of the House of Gaga and oh, the yeah. cigarette glasses and, you know, the creations. I, I miss all of that. It's too, it's all too simple now for me. 
Totally. I mean, that was the thing that was so, you know, iconic about her was she totally was, she was like a curator of art that she like wore on her body and that she put in her music videos. And now like I maybe she's just not inspired anymore yeah. by things. I don't know. I miss the music videos. I miss the high production yeah. value and, you know, they were so out of the box and and just the way she presented herself, she took herself so seriously. Yeah. And it was like this like movement when she would come into these award shows. You know, yeah. It wasn't just like she was there. It was like a big event. Yeah. And that's what we miss in pop music. I mean, put her I, in an egg. There you go. Bring back the egg. I miss the I miss <laughs> the spectacle of everything. It's all yeah. too simple. Looking at the VMAs, which were a few weeks ago, I mean, it, it was there's like I said on this show, there's no difference between that now and the Billboard Music Awards. There's no spectacle. There's no grandeur. Yeah. There's no yeah. theatrics. I mean, when Britney had that slave free performance, the every inch of that stage was covered in this jungle theme. I mean, they had real animals on stage. Now, I mean, bring it back to Britney when she came back last year. They just had the shadow hand. And, I mean, there's literally there's nothing on stage. Yeah. So it just shows like how everything is so stripped down. And I mean, yeah. like, we want theater. Yes, <laughs> I agree. I mean, the meat dress is probably decomposed by now, but bring out something else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the meat dress. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's get creative again. You know, those same people who came up with those ideas, those same minds are still there. Let them yeah. create. Yeah. I want to talk about Fergie real quick because I'm sad to hear about her split from her husband, Josh Duhamel. Mm -hmm. Uh, I Mm -hmm. feel like they were like one of those young Hollywood couples who was always kind of a shock that they just made it work and they have beautiful kids. And I've always been very loyal to Fergie. Um, She hasn't always made it easy like with the second album. But uh, I was really surprised to hear of the news. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you a Fergie fan? Uh, Somewhat, but please explain to me, like, what what is the Fergie, what is the Fergie attraction? Well, for me, it started when she had her Fergalicious song back in the day, and I made a music video to it. Those who really know me are probably rolling their eyes that I'm talking about this music video, but I made a music video to it on Thanksgiving, and it was really cheap and disastrous, (laughs) and it was made to be that way. It was made to be a joke, but people thought I was really trying to create like a music video, so that was like my first taste of like being any type of any viral anything, so Mm -hmm. it's still Mm -hmm. on YouTube if you want to look it up, Cool. but they took the sound out, so it's not as entertaining. But like I've always had an affinity for Fergie, and I enjoy her very much. I don't know. I just I think she's I don't know. She's just a cool chick. Yeah. So yeah. I, and I've then flash forward to recently when I go to Easter Mass and I see her and her husband, and so it kind of like it's cool. Like I feel like I like see them sometimes. I feel like I have like a, not a connection, but like she's like back in my like my ether. Wait, you know? like here? Yeah, in L.A. Yeah, Wait, they, they which, go to a, uh, a church in Brentwood. Oh, yeah, that's so. Funny. So yeah, and I see them as a family. Of course, everything always looks good from the outside. But like I was, yeah. I was just sad. I just feel like this is the one person that I actually do run into. So it's like. <laughs> They kind of on happy. my radar, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, our reports say that they just really have grown apart in the more recent years. And, um, I don't know, it's kind of sad. But overall, the second album is coming out 11 years after the first. And, I mean, we had a show, my God, at the beginning of this year or the end of 2016. And it was yeah. about music that was coming out in 2017, what to expect. And I was like, Fer- Fergie's album is done. Like, it's coming out, like, any day. And look, it's still not out as of the time we're recording this show. And so it's absolutely ridiculous. The album leaked in July, and they never acknowledged it. Then, like, two weeks later, it went up for pre-sale. And now it'll be out on September 22nd. Wow. So how long is that in total? Over 11 years. Holy. (laughs) So, I mean, you know, as far as an artist goes with putting out music, I mean, come on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Are you doing it or not? Are you putting out? Think of how many albums you could put out in 11 years. Should I get off the pot? Yeah. (laughs) So it's really annoying as a fan to be like, what what is this? Like, like Milf Money came out, didn't do very well. That came out well over a year ago. That's on this album. Like, Life Goes On, also on this album. Like, these are songs that have been out for well over a year. And it's like, these are still, like, unreleased. Like, are you kidding? <laughs> Especially in this digital world. Like, why wouldn't they just be singles? Like, there's just so much disconnect. I know she switched la- record labels. So I-, I really don't get it. But I will vouch for her because she has put together a visual album. So yeah. all the songs now have videos. So cool. I'm really kind of into this. Cool. 
the eye pick is having a special like night it was one night only really? i couldn't get tickets i'm so pissed i would have even drawn up to pasadena to see this <laughs> and i don't go to pasadena for any yeah his expression right now is is, is disgust yeah I, the, <laughs> the in the valley we're just uh, no there's a, a huge feud there which will never repair itself but I would even go up to Pasadena to see this. People in LA are so against the Valley. It cracks me up. I'm really against it. <laughs> Terribly against it. So it's appearing at the IPIC on the 20th. And I want to see it yeah. so bad. I cannot go. So it airs in other major cities at IPIC theaters. So if you want to check it out, Google it. Let me know what you think. I mean, I'm sure all the videos will surface and they'll be online. But I wanted to really see it in, you know, the full theater form. Because I am a fan of hers. And it would have been cool. But I guess I waited too damn long. But, um yeah, so I'm looking forward to this new album, even though, I mean, I have not listened to the leak version. I'm very loyal yeah, in that sense. Yeah. But um, So it has leaked. We shall see what yeah. it has coming up. Yeah. So, well, when we return, we're going to talk more with Steven, and I'm going to tease an upcoming show here at Grant's Rants. That and more. Now this. You're listening to Grant's Rants. Subscribe and spread the word. There are a lot more rants to come. Listen anytime on all major podcasting platforms. And now, back to the show. And we're back talking with Stephen Blum. And we're going to be learning a little bit about what it's like to be a writer out here in L.A. and this portion of the show. I have a lot of questions about this. I've been dabbling with some recap writing you know just a little bit here and there it's been fun to do but i mean you know steven is like a legit writer he's he's writing the articles that you've, you've perhaps read so let's talk a little bit about it you're a contributing editor over editor over at broadly and their twitter describes it as uh, four women who know their place uh-huh. can you explain a little bit more about what type of articles you can find at broadly So I think broadly sort of grew out of this feeling that a lot of women's media online was opinion based. We had Jezebel, there was Exo Jane, which is like personal essays, basically. And it was this idea that we should cover news that women actually care about from around the world and, uh, and give women opportunities to, to cover these subjects. And incidentally it's also a great place to be gay because they cover lgbt issues constantly Mm -hmm. so yeah that's that's broadly well it sounds like a very conservative outlet perhaps endorsed (laughs) by trump oh sure yeah sure no it sounds very like liberal and new age yeah very progressive which is a good thing yes so i like that yeah so let's talk a little bit more about the work that you've done with through them how long have you been over there uh about two years Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what are some of the broad topics, a few things that come to mind that you've been able to write about while there? The first article I wrote was about a, a women in California who were fighting the statute of limitations for rape and sexual assault, which basically dictate that you have to press charges against a rapist within a certain period of time or else the case gets, you know, thrown out or it gets it's becomes uh you can't you can't press charges anymore so uh i interviewed these women who were fighting it and it they actually were successful so it was very exciting Uh, i got to write like a few different articles about their sort of movement and the protests that they led um and a number of them were cosby survivors so i got to talk to them um and yeah and in between uh, i've written about like all sorts of different things. I wrote about these women who created the world's first academic journal devoted exclusively to pornography. Hmm. Uh, and that was actually a really fun article to write. Uh, basically just got to talk about how the Academy has sort of, you know, shunned academic studying porn because it's been such a controversial topic in feminist circles but how these women were were able to create this this journal that's now sort of become very well known among like academics who uh, study sex. So uh, what's yeah. in this? Like, what is it? What's in it? Like, like who's been what films or like? Is it's that all sorts it, of stuff. It's like the IMDb of porn. Is yeah, that what it is. Kind of. Well, I mean, so basically, like, there's there's there was like a study on like. Uh, you know, Pornhub, like the the tags that people use for Pornhub to like upload videos. Uh, it's it's sort of like a Nate Silver esque like, you know, uh, study on on how how we categorize porn. Um, huh. But it, it, like, 
I mean, there was even a really interesting article about this. This this guy wrote this piece about what happens to uh, bottoms who bear back and how they're discarded by the industry after they bear back. Oh, really? Because they're considered to be like used goods. This was a while ago. Oh, I was going to say, because it's now like, after yeah. prep, it's, it's a different yeah. story. But yeah, so huh. really like edgy edgy right. interesting you stuff. go there with these articles now do yeah. you pitch these yourself or are they coming to you with these ideas or is it a little bit of both there's a little bit of both um I, it seems very specific like that's yeah. not very specific like they're talking with these women and this yeah. journal and like okay i mean you know i wonder where that came from you know what i mean but it's definitely that one i pitched interesting you did yeah i did i did uh i just i it kept on popping up because i have a google uh scholar account uh, through my husband and so I go I go on that and like I just will like look for interesting studies and I kept on seeing links to the journal of porn studies and I was like what the hell is this uh, but yeah I mean I've written about like studies on gay dating apps and studies on um, written about like how sex toys have been portrayed on TV this is a lot mm-hmm. of like sex writing for sure yeah <laughs> yeah like a lot because so you've also written for vice and GQ what are some things that you've written for GQ uh, I wrote a piece about gay tourism so mm-hmm. I wrote a piece about how LGBT people are, are traveling to go to prides all around the world so how there's like this new jet setter class of gays who like oh, go yeah. to Mykonos and they go to Barcelona and they go to Berlin and they mm-hmm. go to Florida and yeah yeah no in an article like that like how do you reach out to people I'm so curious like who who are living that lifestyle that you can interview like how do you find did you just like Facebook stalk or like how do you find these people to ask uh well i think i should be a little uh i should be a little careful because i i try to keep some of my sourcing a little bit secret but for this one it was more just like reaching out to people who uh who are who are like gay tourists uh, Mm -hmm. gay tourism industry people okay and and then people who are like part of interpride which is like the international coalition of prides uh around the world so i interviewed them but Mm -hmm. that article like not off the record because this is a podcast but that article was a nightmare to write oh really it was a nightmare because the the sources were all trying to promote themselves and they didn't want to speak candidly about anything except for the guy who runs interpride but it was like dealing with people who are in the tourism industry turns out is is a nightmare (laughs) like they they were all they all hated me too after the article came out people were like i guess you're not gonna get any invitations to any of these events no definitely not (laughs) especially because i didn't use a lot of their quotes because they were just not interesting right yeah. Well, one article that I read recently that you wrote was the LGBT Dreamers Speak Out article, yeah. um, which I thought was fascinating about how these LGBT f- kids, they feel like they're being sent home to a death sentence, which I think a lot of people need to read this stuff. I think it's important to see the fallout of all these things, all this noise that we're always hearing and these one-liners and Trump is doing this. And I mean, I'm at work. I have this little TV screen in an elevator that we go, we go up in the elevator and it gives like the news of the day. It's called a like Captivate or something ridiculous. Yeah. And it's literally like maybe like a hundred characters. And that's how like basically I get my day-to-day news. So I'm in that elevator probably about four or five times. Well, it's been an even number. I go up and down. But you know what <laughs> I mean? Like so many times a day. And that's how I get my information. But I mean, after a while, you hear one thing. Then you see another, and but you don't even think about the fallout that it really has. Like it's just like, oh, this guy's doing something else. But so this article is really interesting because you know it really is about these people who moved here at very young ages. They don't really know their quote unquote home where they came from. Yeah. And um, you know this this one uh, gentleman that you wrote about, he feels you know that he it will be targeted as an LGBT uh, youth through gangs which yeah. is very believable yeah this is the only home that they've known so get, like putting them in some context where they have almost no memories of being there and saying okay now you have to live as a openly trans person here or now you have to live as an openly gay person there's, there's no playbook for them to draw from it would be a disaster especially because some of them are from small towns in mexico it's not like mexico city where they can like walk around with holding hands with their partner mm-hmm. so uh yeah just 
that was that was kind of a struggle trying to get people to talk but uh i I targeted activist communities and then they hooked me up with people who wanted to go on the record about it but um i'm so amazed by the bravery of dreamers like the fact that people will actually go be interviewed by journalists with their full name knowing what we know about this administration Mm -hmm. and uh and just you know telling their stories although you know now there is whatever now the whole daca thing has become a political bargaining chip and who yep. knows what's it, going to, to happen to certain people yeah yeah really knows but still i think about that and i said that's even more of a personal help for these kids yes because now not only are they being you know used as a front it's for a pawn this, yeah yeah but also they really don't have a solid answer on what their future is going to be like you yeah. know i think i feel like it'll all work itself out and i think that you know those folks will be okay but I mean, you know, it's still that they're being used for that conversation and it's someone's life yeah. and their safety is it's disgusting. BS. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel very strongly about that. So th- you wrote an article for Out Magazine yeah. uh, with Lauren, and I can't pronounce her last name. I think it's Waregi. Okay. I believe you. Um, I think and so. she's, she's a fifth harmony young yeah. girl. And, um, you know, you, you, I really enjoyed this article. Tell me a little bit about this. So you, do you have, do you like a sit down with her? Is that what it was? Yeah, it was a sit down with like her PR person and at, at like the coffee commissary in Burbank. Oh, you had to go to the valley for yeah. this one. <laughs> yeah. I guess they were like doing some, they were like, doing some choreography somewhere else. Oh, okay. But yeah, I didn't know anything. I mean, I, I like Fifth Harmony. I didn't know that much about her. Mm-hmm. Um, I I knew that she was came out as bi and that she wrote this really fiery letter to Trump and Billboard. Mm-hmm. And uh, I knew that it stir, stirred up a lot. And that and that I look, was looking through her social media and I saw she's like extremely politically active. And yeah, there is, it is kind of amazing how, you know, pop stars like her are trying to be, you know, part of the resistance, quote unquote, right. uh, rather than just sort of push some BS about girl power. That's what I liked about this article. They're just, like you, like you mentioned at the end of it, that they're not just promoting a squeaky clean, like a political stance. Like we're just going to be, you know, like you said, girl power. Like we, we yeah. I like that they actually do stand for something and, or she does and she stands for something specific. You can yeah. find out what that is and where she stands on that topic, which is rare. And it really, I mean, some people could argue it should and shouldn't be. You know, I I think it's great when someone actually does stand up for something now, they especially use their platform for something good besides just promoting like teeth whitener or something. You know what I mean? Hair like, pills. Yeah, yeah, it's exhausting with all that nonsense. So at least, <laughs> but then it can get a little annoying. Like Lena Dunham and I, we don't get along. Like that, she's just on another level. Like I I can't with her. But at least this girl, you know, I I like what she has to say. Yeah. So um, yeah. now when you sit down for because this article was it appeared in the copy that I saw was a full page so to put something like that together like how long did you have to interview her what's the process like to sit down with someone like her I think I talked to her for maybe like an hour and a half or two hours um, I had like at least I want to say like 12,000 words she talked really really fast maybe 14,000 wow. words um, and the piece itself ended up being like 750 Wow. So yeah, there was a lot of editing. A I mean, lot. yeah, yeah. And then also because you know a lot is just like background, and then you get to the quotes. But right, I think uh, we sh- it's weird. Like I'm, I didn't come to LA to interview celebrities. I didn't come to be part of the entertainment industry. I came because my partner really wanted to move here, and I was like, okay. And I love, and I actually I do like it here, but. Uh, you know, I, I think there's so much news that's breaking all, all around Los Angeles and all around California, and there aren't that many journalists covering it, mm-hmm. uh, especially if it doesn't have to do with celebrities. So I'm happy to to do celebrity like journalism, especially if it helps me to like be able to do other kinds of journalism. But for, right. with someone like her, it's 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 nice. Like I, this is like a whole. It's like introducing me to a sub or a culture that I don't really yeah. know that much about. Because like I, I don't know. Do you listen to Fifth Harmony? I do. Yeah. Well, more of the older stuff, the current stuff. Yeah. It's not totally my jam, but um, yeah, yeah. No, I, I actually, I was pleasantly surprised with the article because. 
like you mentioned, I thought maybe it was like, okay, they're promoting the new album. She happens to be an openly bi woman yeah. and, you know, it's yeah. out magazine. So, you know, she's just going to kind of put that as like a footnote. Like, by the way, guys, I'm part of the community, but right. buy my album. But it wasn't that at all. So, yeah, I encourage you guys to check it out. You can find it in Out Magazine and online coming up, right? Or on- online currently. I think, it, well, it's not online yet, and it, I don't even know if it's on newsstands yet, but you can, like, get a digital copy online. But okay. it should be on newsstands pretty soon, I think. There you go. I wish I knew about these things. Yeah, well, everything's coming out in September. I think her music, too, so they're probably going to coincide that with the release. God, I so hope so. Otherwise, no one's going to read it. <laughs> I know that's another thing. So when it comes to even distribution, I mean, obviously, Alice distribute them on their own, but you're very, you still very reliant on social media. I don't know what to do because Twitter is ruining my mental health. But yeah, I'm on Twitter all the time, and mm-hmm. I'm like sort of sharing my stuff and and reading other people's stuff. But it's it's a huge brain suck, and it makes me feel not creative. So yeah. I I do I'm on Twitter constantly. Mm-hmm. And I, I neglect Facebook completely because I feel like it's where all the parents go. But yeah. I know that Facebook is better if you're like actually trying to talk to your friends or right. be more social. But as far as business goes, I get it. Like you're there to get your article seen and read. So you got to do the work. And it's yeah. going to be a lot. I mean, I, I with this show, I do all that I can. Yeah. I, I really do. I mean, I... It's a lot, and I feel like I never put out enough content, and I've been thinking recently about how can I do this more consistently and, and, and more, you know, even smaller things, but I don't want to jeopardize quality for quantity, and right. it's just like right. I, I'm, I'm trying to develop something additional for the show, and um, I, yeah, I just don't even know with what time I would even have to do that, but I feel as far as my digital footprint goes, I have to. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's hard, like this whole idea of like being regimented with your creativity and like, I'm like the kind of person who wants to just like sleep until 11 and then like talk to someone on the phone for a few hours (laughs) and then like just do something else. And then like, basically I write things at night. Like I start writing around like 1030 and then I work till like two. It's extremely unhealthy. So like I I need to figure out a routine that works better than that. Mm -hmm. But but that's your process. (laughs) I guess <laughs> at this point I don't know if you'll be able to tr- teach yourself a new trick. I don't know yeah. if that's how you do it. I hope I hope I can at some point. Yeah, I need to like train myself to stop at ten o'clock. That's yeah. what I need to do. It's yeah, it's been getting to be crazy. Oh, I but, same. Like yeah. that's that's when I work, and then it's right. hard, impossible to go to sleep. Yeah, I start early. That's the problem. That's I'm good. at my desk at eight. At one, oh, that's so, great. But it, man, it is. But not for my not for my own mental health. It's like we're <laughs> a lot of work. But I'm. I'm Are you a coffee drinker? No, no. I don't drink any caffeine. That's crazy. I mean, you'll occasionally see me with a soda. But what does it yeah. do? Does it not interact with you well? I just don't care for it. The smell of coffee it. gives me a headache. First, oh of all. okay. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I've stayed away from it this long. I've always said I've saved a lot of money. I don't smoke and I don't drink coffee. So <laughs> <laughs> it all goes to the car. <laughs> That's where all that money goes. I'm not saving anything. <laughs> Um, going to and from the valley. That seems to be a recurring theme on the show. Oh. <laughs> so I want to hear about your time in Germany. What oh, did yeah. you do there? Uh, I was there for four and a half years after college, uh, which is a long ass time for someone. Usually people go to Berlin for like six months or so. And I was just obsessed with Germany. I went to Berlin after I went on birthright and then the okay. Gaza war started. And then I was like, peace, peace out. And I went to Berlin for a little bit. And I was just like, what, what the hell is this? It was like this giant city with like this amazing gay scene. And like, there was, you know, galleries everywhere. And I felt like it was full of artists. And I was just like, okay, how can I move here? So I moved back to Seattle. And then I was working at an alternative newspaper. And then the, the, the crash came, the financial crash crash and newspapers of course were like just you know letting go of employees left and right Mm -hmm. so i was like if i'm gonna be poor as might as well go to berlin and be poor there so i went there and everybody's poor in berlin so that was that was kind of nice uh but yeah i i stayed for a really long time i i stayed a little bit too long because after a while you just start to realize like there's no jobs like there's no like nobody's moving anywhere like it's just party central like 24 Mm -hmm. 7 but it's fun for yeah. a period of time, and I had a lot of friends there, so I do kind of miss it. Did you get back? No, I no. like I just talked to my friend from Berlin. She's like my Finnish friend, and she's like, 
I dream about like surprising her. Like I have mm-hmm. dreams where I'm like, I like literally just like pop out and she's like, oh my God. So I need, yeah. I need to go back. Yeah. 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 You have to. Yeah. I love, I love Berlin though. I, if, have you been? No, no. I've never been okay. out of the country, sadly. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't have the option. <laughs> well, so. it's, it's, you know, it's, it's an experience. Like, yeah, it's, I bet. it's something to, to like, I don't know why I did it. It was kind of insane. Cause I didn't even have a job lined up. But you'll but. always look at that time in your life as something special. Always. I mean, the, the first year for sure. Yeah. Before I started going insane. <laughs> Cause I was like, there's no jobs. Yeah. What did you do? <laughs> did you just party? I worked at a tech company. Oh, okay. I, worked, I did like tech blogging and mm-hmm. then like I was a freelancer for a while and I wrote about like dating Germans as a Jew <laughs> and yeah. It sounds like you live the dream in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there anything else you want to promote while you're here? Anything else you uh, want to talk about? about well, I have an article coming out on World of Wonder, which is the production company behind RuPaul's Drag Race. And uh, I spent forever on it, and I think it's I think it'll be okay. I don't hmm. know if it'll be good, but it'll be I'll be set. I'll be like okay with it. Yeah. Any hints on what it's regarding? Uh, it's just about their early career, so it's about what it was like for them because they they were they were part of the club kid movement in New York okay. in the eighties. So the producers, the producers. Okay. It's from their perspective. Okay, because they've done so much besides RuPaul's Drag Race. They've done like The Eyes of Tammy Faye about Tammy Faye Baker, and they've done all these HBO documentaries, and they did Million Dollar Listings. Like right, so it's a little bit of a profile on these guys. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. So I that'll be that. in 49 Magazine in like, I think it coming out tomorrow, actually. Nice. On Monday, yeah. All right, well, I will, as soon as I can find the available link, I will put that in the information surrounding this episode so you can go straight from this show and read it and support Steven's article. And, support um, me. Yes, and that'll do that. <laughs> so you guys can check out the next show here if you'd like over on Grant's Rants. It's coming out next week or the following episode after this if it's already been up. And it's going to be our post-Emmy show and we're going to be looking at Fall TV and viewing it with a critical eye, as I like to say. We're really going to be examining um, what's coming on on all the major networks and what we're really not interested in and what's catching our attention. And so I think it's going to be a fun one. I love TV talk and I've waited to put this panel together. So episode 70, kids, check it out. I appreciate you for supporting the rants. I love you for listening. We're done. Please leave. I'm asking you to leave. Steven, thank you for coming thank in. Thank you so much. Yes. This is a blast. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you. We'll be back with more rants. This has been Grant's Rants. Support the rants on Patreon. Follow us on Twitter at It's Grant's Rants. Cover art created by Howie Rone. Voice over by Aw oh Yeah. Original theme music composed by Alexander Arntzen. The Grant Michael Collection.